because um, there was a brother of mine who says, well, what if you live in a third world country or if you're in a country like Africa and all they have is plastic bottles? I live in a third world country in Africa and we can get glass bottles. That's okay, well, there, not everybody... Okay, I don't mean to point at anybody, but there are there are places in, uh -huh. in certain wild, wilderness areas where people can only get plastic. Uh, no, I do understand that, but I mean, you you do what you can. Rather have it than not have it, but ideally, people glass, please. Even when you when you collecting it in uh, when you uh, ur urinating in the toilet, I just get a glass jar like you had, or like a mason jar or something like that, and just collect it. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. There's a pun in there somewhere. So I highly recommend you get some kind of container. It can be a one or two ounce spray bottle. They also make them with the pump top, pump, 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 pump. Yep. So that when you're out in the public and you have a scratch, a, a sting, a bite, a bug bite, poison ivy, sunburn, um, fire burn, whatever it is, you've got Please your... Please talk about the snake bite. People don't realize if they're bitten by a poison snake, what they can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is an all-purpose remedy for a reason because it switches the pH of whatever's been contaminating the body. Mm -hmm. This usually has a pH. If you ever get pH strips, uh, make sure you get the ones that go up to 14. Okay. The, most, of the, most of the ones at the market, you'll see uh, at the stores. Yes. You guys have seen this before? I have, yes. All right. You notice it goes up to 14? I see that. In fact, the one I have does not, so I'm glad you've made note of that. It must go to 14. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. So typically urine is going to sit around 7.2 to 7.5. Mm -hmm. When you're doing more of it and you're fasting on, you're drinking it and you're applying on the body, it can go as high as 12, 13, and 14 alkaline pH. Wow. That's fantastic. Because obviously... No disease can grow in an alkaline system, only in an acidic system. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the only the other reason to keep this out in your car, in your backpack, in your purse, in your glove box, in your medicine cabinet, is because not only may something happen to you and you need a quick remedy, mm -hmm. but you might be in a situation where there's somebody that you're with who happens to have one of these conditions take place. And if they're open to it, you could say, well, I happen to have some of my we with me. Do you mind if I put some of that on you and it'll help take the sting? And, and they usually are open to it because they're in pain. Yeah, exactly. Amazing how even you don't even have to use your own. You can use somebody else's and still get the benefits. Yes, yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, one of the other things on the Shivamba Wisdom chart, one of the other points of this water, is that it works regardless of your considerations. Okay. What it works okay? with, it doesn't care whether you use a man's orin, a woman's orin, adults, a child's, a sick person, a healthy person, someone of a different race, or even, yes, a different species. Because everybody knows they drink cow urine in India and <laughs> yeah. camel urine in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. right. and, uh, we have testimony after testimony of people who have helped bring their precious pets back to life by sharing their orin with their dog, cat, bird. Don't expect you're going to walk around your dog, try to collect its urine. <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. come on. <laughs> That's advanced yoga. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> wow. we, have a, we have a story of a friend of ours who was out in Arkansas, and she would do full-out urine baths. You know, she had collected 20, 30 gallons all in the office places, and she would do urine bath, and she would get out to go to the kitchen to get something and come back in and notice that her pit bull was splashing in the bathtub, was drinking the urine in the bathtub, was having a great time, and after four days of watching the dog do this, she noticed the dog's hip pain was gone. You kidding? You can use urine to take away hip pains, knee pain. So if you soaked a face cloth and you put it over your knee, you could help your knee or your hip or something like that. Come on. 
Very much you can. Another example I have is my friend John, who was a student of mine. He was drinking his urine, but he ends up, he was a master gardener, and he ends up, his knees were blown out. His knees were really hurting him because you got to get down on your knees and knee pads and all that stuff. And his wife says, well, let's just go down to Mexico and get some stem cell injections. And they're going, oh, that's $10,000, $20,000. I said, John, you got trains the stem cells in your urine. Apply it. Soak, a, soak it in something and put it on your knees. He did. Four or five days later, the pain was gone. Oh, my word. Now, it's, you mentioned stem cells. People pay for stem cells. I know somebody who paid $15,000 for yeah. 20,000 stem cells. Yeah. Now, you just said your, your urine creates your, and it's your own stem cells. How much does your, how much stem cells do you get? Do you get yeah. more than 20,000? You get trillions of stem cells. In your own urine. In your own urine. Now, we're using another one of those words that people toss around without really understanding what it is. So let's get really clear. Yes. What the heck is a stem cell? Mm -hmm. Well, a stem cell hasn't been given a job assignment. It's sitting on the bench ready to get to work. So it's what's called as undifferentiated cells. So when the body figures out what it needs and where, it takes these stem cells gives them a purpose they're now classified and they'll become a new eye cell they might become a new uterus cell they might become a new uh, vertebrae and that's what a stem cell does it rebuilds you unbelievable okay so now i really hope people have gotten past the yuck factor the understanding that this is waste that there's no goodness in your urine you flush it as quickly as you can you are sitting with um urine that will literally heal anything in your body outside your body on t top of your skin it does not matter it's going to heal it and it's painted specifically for you because it's your very own so now let's teach them how to actually collect the urine do you age the urine how often do you drink your urine let's teach them some protocols so that they can start doing it themselves and not feel so um and trust me it's uh, I've started doing it and it is a mindset shift. It's like, oh my gosh, really? But you know what? My urine was clear, didn't even have a smell. And when I tasted it, it was pretty bland. It was like, as you say, it's like a form of water. It literally tasted like water, but my mind kept on saying, yuck, your urine. But in, in essence, it had no taste, nothing. It was completely fine. Now, I did notice a difference when you take supplements, but we can get onto that later. So walk us through, tell people that they can calm down now. Let's put them, they can stop stressing. It's easy to exactly breathe. And it's not as awful and revolting as you think it's going to be. Share with us this beautiful protocol. First of all, we want to forgive our parents for toilet training. Yes. That really messed us up. They told us we had to wash our hands and don't, don't, don't hit the rim, guys. Make sure you yes. pee correctly. Uh, pee right in. Mm. And you women, make sure you wipe properly and you know and all mm -hmm. this stuff. So that set us up for a negative association of our bodies and mm -hmm. how it's how it performs. We went out publicly. We were so proper. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and, and we try not to pee in our underwear. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> keep it dry, keep it dry. Keep it dry, do the best you can. So, um, uh, all right, remind me of what we're going doing here. I got off on the side. Uh, no problem. We're talking about how to start uh, take Collecting. collecting your urine therapy and using it, uh, how to drink it, how often, and that kind of thing. Okay. All right, and since this is a appropriately um, appropriate channel and a family, I will not demonstrate how to pee in a jar. So we're going to let so thoughtful. <laughs> we'll move swiftly on. <laughs> I do some crazy stunts, but you know, I'm not that yeah, guy. Yeah, that one. I understand. I don't think the camera can anyway show inside the toilet bowl. But um, yeah, so um, start a thought. I, I, I've always heard you only use the mo the first one in the morning and you use it midstream so you don't take the first and the last but midstream and only the morning but from what you're saying i'm hearing different uh, uh usages and purposes here so 
I think that is not the correct protocol. So I'm all ears to learn what it should be. First of all, let's clear up that misperception. That whole idea about the midstream was written in the Damar Tantra from Shiva 5,000 years ago. And let's unravel what it really is. So you'll find out in 2024, uh, we missed it. What he was saying in there, and there's two verses that are very important to see in there. One of the verse says, the urine is symbolic of a snake and the head and the tail could harm you like a snake could. Uh -huh. That's where we got the idea about the middle stream. Uh -huh. right? It wasn't based on more hormones or less contaminants. That's where it came from. Now, if you read the very next verse, he describes and explains that it's based on tradition and superstition. Wow. Okay. Right. We've got way too much superstition going on right here. Let's just kill it. Oh, we do that. So what you're going to do is you'll, you'll collect it mm -hmm. and um, you can store it several different ways. I'll go into how much in a minute here, mm -hmm. but you can store it either with a cover mm -hmm. Uh, that's a, a cloth cover, kind of like cheesecloth, uh, sprouting bag, flax bag, hemp bag. You can use a nylon stocking. You can use a coffee filter, rubber band, whatever you want. Or you can actually just screw on a lid. Mm -hmm. Now, the only reason people uh, put the little cloth on it because they think it has to breathe. Okay. And the only reason you want to put a lid on it at all so nothing flies in there. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. It doesn't matter because it's, it's sterile. Nothing can contaminate. Nothing can okay. hurt it. All right. So when people say, how much should I drink? Mm. Should I do four ounces in the morning? Should I do two in the afternoon? Should I do six in the afternoon? Mm. Well, a good rule of thumb is drink as much as you can, as often as you can. There's no side effects. There's no harm involved, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go back once again to the Shivamba wisdom chart. Mm -hmm. The very first key point is this. It's an intuitive water, guys. That means your intuition is your guidance, is your guidance system. Mm -hmm. There is no dogma rules or any kind of uh, restrictions on your use of it. It's so simple. Anybody can use it. However, when people approach their healing and their health care with the filter of the medical approach, they're going to think in terms of a structure and a time frame and a quantity. Well, it's simpler than that. Hmm. Just take in as much as you can during the day. And for you, for you people who don't want to get up in the middle of the night to pee, you may want to quit before you go to bed. Makes sense to me. Not, that's so, super easy. It's very super easy. And, and I've, I've worked at this for the last six years to help people to simplify it and don't make it so complicated. And you don't have to reach out to Brother Sage every couple of days because you're, you're hung up on something or you have an illness. Oh, by the way, let me go back to that question, that statement about it heals everything. I don't want to ruffle any feathers here. Well, when people ask me, will it heal diabetes? Will it heal um, Alzheimer's? Will it heal multiple sclerosis? Will it heal the... Uh, Covey thing. Well, it this, that, and the other thing. And the answer is yes and no. Ooh. Why would you say no, Brother Sage? Mm -hmm. Because it depends on if you bring together the four areas of your true health, the pillars of health, which we always talk about in the holistic health model. And they are the mental, the physical, the spiritual, and the emotional. Mm -hmm. So if you're just drinking your urine, but you don't change your diet, you don't exercise, you don't do enemas, you're not, you're not working with your emotional uh, wellness, you don't have any self-nurturing or spiritual practices, it's going to be a hit or miss whether you get results. I've noticed over the years that people who don't change these other factors in their life say it didn't work for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the determining factors. You have to help your body out as much as you can in every way possible. Understood. And so um, you mentioned enemas there, and um, I'm sure a few people may or may not be aware of an enema. You can do a home enema. You don't necessarily have to go out and pay for it because people get embarrassed. I'm going out. Somebody's going to stick something up my Rear end, you can. There you go. You can do it safely in the comfort of your own home. 
highly recommended and usually they're coffee enemas but i'm suspecting here that you could change out the coffee and use the urine instead yeah very much so because coffee is acidic it's it's a tricky thing to work with because most of the coffee that's on the market is run through a coffee uh, an acid wash and they put in solvents and all this other stuff there are some organic pure coffees out there i do have links to some of them but that's not where we're about today we're about it now when you're doing the enemas you're either going to use fresh or evolved by the way uh, I know a lot of people still use the word aged, but I've been putting the word evolved and evolving into the conversation for the last six years mm -hmm. because, you know, our human language has limitations. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to rethink how we use words and give them an upgrade. So I changed the word aged and aging because when people hear aged and aging, they have association with it's losing its potency and you know, like an older person and getting weak, you don't have the strength. And, and so that ain't the case here because the urine, once you collect it, it's evolving. And it, it actually gets better and better with time. Yeah. Like the opposite. The opposite. So whether you use the evolving or fresh, you're still going to get results and incorporate that with everything you're doing and you cannot fail the only way you can fail in this journey is to quit mm -hmm. i mean you're making it so simple so simple and easy to do um uh i mean is there a, a time or an age where you would evolving it uh i hear you can go as long as 21 days would you not go longer than that um just from a taste perspective or any age is good are you talking about when to cut off the aging process or the evolving process mm -hmm. uh well let's clear that up too mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of unraveling of we're our doing a lot of myths and truths here because there's so much out there that's not correct right and i'm also going to explain about what they identify in the urine mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a good one too so there has never mm -hmm. been an actual set uh way to measure evolving urine it's been a subject of discussion for many many years mm -hmm. uh a lot of teachers in books like uh the water of life by john w armstrong a lot of people have heard of his book well that came out in 1944 he originally wrote it in the 1920s and in 1944 he puts out this book and in his book by the way he helped heal thousands of people using urine therapy in the 1940s wow wow go figure yes we've never heard of that i've never even heard of this man never heard that that happened well you have to go to alternative news sources to that's it. yeah that's it <laughs> So in there, he came up with a measurement of four days is what he determined was evolving orin. Well, in, in, in 2019, 2018, I ended up in Las Vegas at the Water of Life Symposium where 80 people who drink their urine all showed up in a Vegas hotel. You know, we did toasts in the morning. We did all kinds of stuff. And um, there was a woman there, Dr. Rosalyn Hansen, a, a very, a very wise and researched naturopath. And she determined that nine months was the uh, requirement to consider it evolving because she considered it, you know, like the gestation period of a baby. Uh -huh. Well, in actuality, this is where I like to put, point it out is the moment you collect it, what do you think it's doing sitting around? It's evolving. Mm. It's growing in potency. It's growing in stem cells. It's growing in all kinds of stuff. So the longer you store it, whether you store it for a month, six months, a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and I know people have stored it for 20 years. And it's still, yeah, yeah, 20 years. It is black as you can imagine. It has an alkalinity of 13 and higher, and it didn't taste bad, didn't smell bad. You kidding me? It didn't smell and it would taste? No. They I have don't right store it in the fridge. So if people thinking, oh, they have to refrigerate, how do you store it? You clearly don't need a fridge. You don't need a fridge. The only reason people put it in a fridge because they think it, it's safe they or, have to. Uh, yeah. or they like cold drinks. Mm -hmm. And some people love to like charge up their 
their water and charge up their supplements. So they put it in the sun, they put it under a copper pyramid, they put it on top of the Tesla plate, they have some kind of toroidal field around it. You know, they, ha they have a great time with it. And I, I think it's perfect the way it is, but you know, it's your water, you know, have some fun with it. Okay, fabulous. Last question I'm gonna ask you is, a lot, the, another myth is that, um, oh, I can't take, drink my urine now, I'm on chemo. So obviously I don't wanna do it because I have got chemo in my body or I'm on an antibiotic, so I'll wait till the antibiotic's done. Or once my, my other medication, I'm on very high blood thinners or whatever their medication is, they don't wanna drink it while they're on that. Please, can you share light on that? Yeah, there's two highlight, two points on this factor. Is one is, if you're still, uh, if you're still a believer in your doctor and his and his so-called medicine, and you don't want to uh, go against what he advised, then I suggest what you do is you take the orin orally or topically, create a window on either side of whatever the medication is, and it'd be the same with people who do prescription drugs or recreational drugs so that the body doesn't go after it and try to neutralize it so quickly. Okay. And what you're wanting to do is let it run its course through the body and continue doing urine therapy throughout the day when you're not doing the medication. Mm -hmm. And at some point what's gonna happen is the brain chemistry is gonna reset. Okay. The body chemistry is gonna come back into balance and you won't need the medication anymore whether the doctor says you should or not, trust your body and stop taking it at that point. Okay. Okay. Makes total sense. Now, so here's thank, thank you for your time. You've been absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. I loved it. I believe you have a special gift for everybody. So if uh, we can just let everyone know, they're going to be getting a link to get a PDF download of this beautiful book, Healing Water From Within. Thank you so much for gifting us with that. That is outstanding and so good of you. So please make sure that you download uh, the link before it disappears and then you can't have access to the gift anymore. Thank you for your wisdom, your time, your excitement today and all that you've shared. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Well, I wanna thank you and all we're saying is give Piss a chance. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Yes, yeah, I'd say cheers to that as well. Thank you once again. Thank you. Much love to you. Aloha. Aloha.